Greetings mere mortals, my name is Sean Shooping and welcome to the first part in my series of how to completely over-engineer your home lab. So obviously in this series I'm going to be rebuilding my home lab and uh, hopefully in the process I get to share some geeky and helpful stuff with you guys. I won't be doing any tech demos in this video but I do want to show what I've been getting up to and what I plan on getting up to in the future. My original intention was to have all of the equipment running up here somewhere but there's a slight problem with that plan. thousand years later. So as you can hear, after the server posts and settles down, the volume does come down quite substantially, but it's still wildly unacceptable to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. So over the last few weeks, I've been down in my garage building a movable rack for all of the bigger noisier components, not only to get the noise out of my office, but I really wanted the whole thing to be somewhat portable in case I ever needed to move it. Before I get into what I have planned with all of this stuff, uh, here's a little overview of what the hardware is and what it's capable of. So if you've seen some of my previous videos, some of this may <laughs> look a little bit familiar. So over here, I've got this TP-Link switch and these Dell 3020M micro PCs. And this used to be my old Maz KVM pod slash Kubernetes cluster thing. But it was pretty stupid because uh, any applications that I try to stack on top of that were either horrendously slow or just killed themselves. So this stuff's going to get repurposed. Um, new additions to the crowd, we've got 28 new 500 gig hard drives that uh, we're going to be doing some stuff with. Uh, we've also got some new, <laughs> new Cisco 2960G switches. I figured I may as well at least try up my Cisco networking skills. And then the most obvious of the lot are the two super micro servers right at the bottom. The super micro servers may just look like regular 2U servers, but they're from the Fat Twin series of servers, and they're actually four completely independent nodes mashed together in a single chassis. Each node has two Xeon E5630 processors, 16 gigs of memory, and a RAID controller. And on the back, we have access to an IPMI port for remote management, two USBs, two one gig ethernets, and each node gets access to three of the 12 drives up front. So there's many reasons that people build home labs, but perhaps the most common is just to have a flexible space where you can learn and improve. I want to use my home lab to sharpen my DevOps and automation skills, but I also want to learn how to build highly available fault tolerant applications and services. If I use the pets versus cattle analogy, I want to be a better cattle rancher. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with a pets versus cattle analogy, application infrastructure can be classified as either a pet or a cow. When your dog or app gets sick, you do everything in your power to get your friend back to a happy and healthy state. This can take a lot of time, effort and money, but the end result is always worth it. On the flip side, cows aren't friends. They're resources. When a single cow on your milk farm gets sick, you don't nurse it back to health. You remove it from production and replace it with a new one. Not my analogy. I really do like cows, but the analogy does prove a point. If I'm going to become a better cattle rancher, I need a setup which is super flexible yet robust enough to deal with me breaking it intentionally. I plan on using OpenStack because it 
behaves pretty similarly to a public cloud. It also allows me to build complex scenarios really quickly using a variety of DevOps tooling. I can also simulate failures and should be able to practice remediating broken components with automation. Once I've done all my learnings, I can just as easily destroy all the cloud resources and create something completely new without having to reconfigure the underlying infrastructure. In a previous video, I showed how to build an OpenStack cloud using Maz and Juju. But if you analyze the deployment, you'll notice that there's a whole bunch of single points of failure in the cloud itself. Not to mention Maz and Juju themselves are also single points of failure. So while my primary objective is to become a better cattle rancher, I've inadvertently shot myself in the foot because my core infrastructure components are a bunch of pets. <laughs> Even though I may be building highly available applications higher up in the stack, it doesn't matter because if you knew that pets get sick, bad stuff is surely to start happening higher up in the stack too. So in keeping with the theme of over-engineering your lab, this is what I have planned for the up and coming videos. To build my super farm, I'm gonna take one of my Dell 3020M micro PCs and I'm gonna install Ubuntu and Maz on that. I'll then enlist all the remaining hardware so that Maz can handle the installation of the OS's onto the bare metal. Next, I'll deploy Ubuntu to some of the bare metal, but I'll register them as KVM hosts so that I can run VMs on top of them. This will allow me to set up a secondary Maz server running as a VM on a different physical host. If one of the physical machines fails, Maz should still be available. Realistically though, this requires an external Postgres server so that both Maz frontends have a common database. Now this is where it gets a little bit weird. I'm too stupid and lazy to figure out how to install and configure Postgres. I usually use Juju to build my Postgres clusters for me, but I can't bring Juju into the picture until we have a redundant Maz configuration. So this leaves us in a chicken and egg scenario. So to get around that, I'm gonna build my own custom load balancer to put in front of Maz. I'll deploy three additional VMs and on those I'll install and configure a pacemaker cluster and install HA proxy. For the time being, I'll just add the first Maz server to the backend HA proxy configuration. And by doing this, I abstract the entry point of Maz and this will allow me to bootstrap a Juju cluster by pointing it to the load balancer instead of directly at the Maz server. Later on, when I add a second instance of Maz or one of them fails for that matter, I won't need to change the API entry points configured in the Juju controllers. So after I've done this, I can now get Juju to build me a Postgres replica. I can then back up the local database on Maz01 and restore it to the external Postgres database. Uh, we can then reconfigure both Maz servers and point them to the external database. At this point, I can make the load balancer aware of the second Maz server, and now we have a completely redundant core infrastructure. Just for the fun of it, uh, I plan on building an AWX Ansible server and a GitLab server to store all my code. And seeing as though both of those use Postgres, I can also point those to the redundant Postgres cluster that Juju built for me. After this, I can use Juju to deploy my OpenStack cloud on the six remaining nodes, except that this time around, I'm gonna deploy all the OpenStack services in triplicate so that we can horizontally cluster each of the OpenStack services like we did with the load balancer. Later on, I'm also hoping to add some centralized logging and monitoring because when dealing with clustered services, if and when something breaks, troubleshooting is usually like looking for multiple needles in multiple haystacks. So it helps to consolidate the view of logs and availability of components. So if you're still here at this point of the video, obviously you found what I've been talking about somewhat interesting. So thanks for sticking around, but that's pretty much all I have for now. Make sure to catch the rest of the series as and when I release them. Uh, and until next time, I will see you in the next video. Peace.